Hey y'all, Nani here. Welcome back to my channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry. I am, uh, my goal this year was to film every day, but the events of January 6th, Wednesday with the uh, storming of the Capitol broke me. And I'll tell you why. One, because I despise any kind of violence. Um, and it's funny because I also find myself like Inside me, there's, like, a rebel, you know, someone that just wants to, you know, fight the system and, and protect the people and do what's right and all of that. Um, but that's not what Wednesday's bullshit was about. Um, it was about sore losers. And it's okay if you don't agree with me. Um, I didn't agree with the election results last time in 2016. But I didn't say it was, you know, rigged. I didn't, even though there were some questionable things there, I just went about my life. And I was like, well, this is it. Um, I wish him well because the best thing you can do is say, I hope he does great because any president doing great things is great for our country, right? So, um, I just wished him the best and I went on with my life. I never had a good feeling about, uh, Trump being our president, I did not feel he was mentally or maturely capable of handling such a serious, highly responsible role of basically caring for millions of people. And I know everybody is not going to get what they want. It's just impossible. Um... But it was the sheer we don't give a shit about what the other side thinks. The if you're not with us, you're against us kind of mentality. Um, you know, the people that were against you are, are really just the people that didn't vote for you, but we still hoped that you would see some of our needs as serious and look to make all of your American people as happy as possible. My biggest worry was the, um, the things in Obamacare that said uh, gave protections on pre-existing conditions. Because as you know, I have a chronic illness and, and all that. Um, I currently don't have any insurance. I can't afford Obamacare. Um, you know, because I don't have a job. I don't know if I qualify for Medicaid because I'm married and I'm getting unemployment. Um, and that is one thing about our country that I can truly say is phenomenal that we get a country, even though we lost our job, they do their best to supplement our income and allow us to continue living relatively normal lives. Um... Well, we're doing our best to find a job. However, during a 
pandemic and a government takedown, finding a job when you're 50 and a woman and chronically ill and you have all these youngins coming in here and taking whatever you'll give them and you're way overqualified and the jobs that you are willing to take a pay cut on the bosses or the hiring managers assume you are going to cut and run the minute something better comes along and that's not my style it's never been my style if the company's good to me and they have great benefits, I know I'll work my way up, as I always have done, to a better position, to making more money. And money is not my um, guiding factor in this. I just need to pay my bills. That's all I care about. I don't, like, I don't need to go buy fancy clothes or shoes or anything like that like um i just want to be able to take care of my family uh with health needs and have in health insurance for myself so i can continue on with my therapy for my mental illnesses along with um my physical ailments Um, but it, it, it broke me. I just didn't know. I couldn't, I was just so depressed and sobbing and because what it is, is that when you see your nation's capital, how easily it's overrun, right? Like just walk right in, you know, or break right in. But there was no, interestingly enough, when there were the riots and the protests, and let me make clear, once again, I do not agree with violent riots. I agree with peaceful protests. If you're rioting and throwing things in your own community's stores, and looting them, then you're not rioting for any anything else other than your own selfish need to steal whatever shit you can get your hands on. That's it. Don't fool yourself into thinking you're doing it for any other reason than yourself. Um, but I do believe in peaceful pro protest. But what I saw which I've never seen in all of my 51 plus years is a president and his followers, you know, his Rudy Giuliani and the other people there, his son and everybody inciting violence, telling these people to go march over to the Capitol uh, and that it should be trial by combat. That was Rudy Giuliani. Um, Trump said, you know, strength is the only way to show them we mean business. I mean, words that are all... If you read between the lines, which is what his base is used to doing... He may be saying one thing, but what they're hearing him say is storm the Capitol. And the fact that he said, I'll be right there with you. I'll be right there walking with you to the state Capitol. That riled them up more than anything. And then he gets in his SUV and he goes back to the White House, like the coward that he is. Um... To see our capital be breached in such a way, when I see something like that, it makes me personally feel vulnerable. If those people were to take over, 
I feel certain that the people they would first gather up or attack or whatever would be me. Um, the people that think it's bullshit. Um, I had, you know, I suffer from anxiety and depression and, and DID and I had a complete meltdown. Uh, mostly because I've never seen anything like this and I didn't understand what was going on. I saw a woman, um, this is before they knew, you know, now they blur her face out. But before this, it had just happened. The woman, the Ashley Babbitt, who was a veteran who drove from wherever the hell she came from, Arizona, I think, all the way to Washington. I saw some of the videos where she's screaming into the camera about whatever, I don't know. And, um... I saw her get shot and I know they said she died hours later, but for me, I saw her die right in front of me. Her, her eyes let me know she was no longer with us. Um, she was just gone and it's an image that I cannot get out of my head. And I don't care whose side she was on, whether she was for Trump or Biden. I know she wasn't for Biden, but you know what I mean. I don't want to see people being murdered over this stupid bullshit. It's just politics, guys. It's just politics. It's been going this way around and around for centuries and um you can't make everybody happy you can't you never will um but it's not okay to do things like this to storm the capital and <sighs> i mean if they were doing crazy things like I don't know, executing people in, that, I don't know, that, uh, that aren't physically their best. You know, people like me that were, you know, we bring down the human race because of our illnesses or whatever. Then, yeah, I would say storm the fucking capital because that, that's wrong. You know what I mean? But. I don't even know what the purpose of that was. And it, it just... It just broke me. I've been laying here for the past few days. It caused a lot of... Um, turmoil in my body. Some symptoms I have not dealt with ever. Um, I fell off the bed and screwed up my ankle yet again but I've been having this very weird which also made me kind of sad because I you know found a couple jobs that were like okay you know but you'd have to drive here and I'm like well uh, COVID but okay you know I'd like to have a job so I guess I'll risk my life and never see my family again. Uh, because, you know, my mom has COPD and my dad diabetes. So I'm not going to just go hang out at work where there's COVID shit and then go hang out with my parents. But, you know, at this point, I, I it's been so long. I just want to work. I want something else to focus on. Um, and I was like, okay, well... You know, I could drive if I have to. Driving really hurts my hands a lot. Um, but I was like, well, you can switch on and off, drive with one hand, then drive with another, that kind of thing. And I was like, okay, fine, you know, whatever. 
I'll make it work. But then, I've never had this symptom before ever. My inner thigh, uh, it's the upper part that meets the pelvic bone area. It started seizing up on me. And I mean like, it was already like this. And it just, without moving it, hurt really bad. But if I tried to move it in any way, get up, out of bed, getting back into bed was even worse. It was so excruciating that the only way to get through it was to scream at the top of my lungs. And I've never had this symptom before. It's been going on for a week now. And, um, I don't know when it's going to go away. And it, it kind of put me into a depression because I had really convinced myself that I could drive. But if I were to drive with my leg the way that it is, it's my right leg, okay? And I'm doing a 45-minute commute with a lot of stop and start traffic. So you're stopping and starting, stopping and starting, stopping and starting. And you're using that inner thigh muscle gets used when you're doing that and you're having to hold it there while you're waiting for the light to change. And I don't know what would happen. You know, I don't know if I'd be able to hold it that long to not let go and hit the other car, you know. And so having that taken away from me, that option of driving myself to work taken away from me was another blow. Um, and I just got real depressed, guys. Just real depressed about the state of our country and this pandemic that's going on and the, and the civil unrest and the embarrassment of what happened on the 6th of January and the, the scariness of what happened on the 6th of January and that I still have people around me that don't see it. Their eyes are not open. They don't see what happened. And there's something about that kind of craziness, you know what I mean, that really scares me. Um... And it just makes me want to run away. <sighs> so I don't know. I don't know. And I'm worried about the next two weeks or whatever we have until the inauguration. I'm worried about the inauguration. Is something going to happen? You know, there's parlor now where um, I don't have an account, but, uh, you know, Trump could be over there now planning all kinds of fun things for us over the next two weeks. And I'm worried about the in inauguration. I'm worried about Joe. I'm worried about Kamala. I'm worried about the future of our country. And... You know, I feel because of this illness, it makes me feel weak and fragile and like if something were to happen and go down, I I wouldn't be able to, you know, I'd slow everybody down, right? I'd slow my family down. Um, And that scares me. I just, you know, especially since I used to be such... This badass bitch that you couldn't, you couldn't touch, you know. Um, I, I feel like I've lost that. And it's sad. But, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I just, 
I'm sad that I didn't get to do the videos. I wanted to do videos every single day for the month of January. And I've already failed my first um, task. So. But I also want to move more in January. So we'll keep We'll see if we can get that started. Um, I have the new doctor, which my appointment with him is on inauguration day. And I'm very afraid that he's going to take one of my medications away from me, from me that work. It works very well and it keeps me from having to take Advil and Advil, um, tears up my stomach big time but it's the only substitute for this pain patch that I use it's the only thing that works and um, I now have pain not just in my muscles and and the nerve pain like the burning skin and all of that but I have uh, joint pain as well so, I don't know. I don't know. No job, no job prospects. I feel like all of the, these things going on in the world, the, the civil unrest, the storming of the Capitol, the COVID, I think they're keeping... I think they're keeping me from finding a good job. I think that's part of the reason why I'm having such a problem. I think age and my experience level has a lot to do with it. Um, and getting companies to understand that I will not leave you. I will be loyal. I ha I, I mean, I have a... A, a letter of recommendation from a CEO um, and many others that from high ranking executives that can speak to my loyalty and my hard work. So, but it's just frustrating that I can't even get that far. And most of these companies are like, oh, $9 an hour, $10 an hour. I'm like, I can't pay my bills with that. There's no way. Like, there's no way. So, I don't know. I don't really believe in end times, but sometimes it believes, I, it, it feels like end times. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, anyway. Sorry this video was such a downer. Um... I will try to make the next one more fun. I am working on curling my hair, but I've realized because of the thigh situation, I cannot do a stand-up rinsing out of the hair color because I don't know when this thing is going to seize on me. And if I'm standing up while it does and I've got hair color, you know how that whole mess goes, I could, I could easily drop... So we're looking at getting a adapter for the toilet, or for the toilet, for the tub uh, faucet thing that'll let me have a little sprayer so I can just sit there and spray the water out of my hair. Will I be sitting in a tub full of red hair color that will probably dye the rest of my skin red? Sure. Yeah, I probably will. But nobody's going to see me. So, you know, it's either that or I fall in the shower and break my neck. And I really don't want to do that. So, but this is what happens when you're trying to color your hair and you have a chronic illness. You have to find more clever ways to get things done. Because uh, coloring it, which is going to take forever, and then standing in a shower... Um, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea for me. So, 
And the last thing I need to do is fall since, like I said, falling out of bed the other night, screwed up my ankle again, and um, I just don't need that kind of mess. So, anyway, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you're doing better than me anyway. Um, I don't know. It's, everything's a mess. And even if you, you know, support Trump, I support you. I don't hate Trump supporters. I don't, you know, everyone in my family is a Trump supporter. Uh, my husband, my mother-in-law, my parents, you know, um, and I love them. They're not extremists. They're not storming the Capitol. You know what I mean? Um, they're voting uh, on by party and by po policies. Um, and I respect that. You know, I understand that. Uh, you don't have to agree with me. And I don't have to agree with them. And that's fine. But um, yeah, I just, I am still in shock. I'm still in shock. So anyway, um, I'm going to go for now. I'm very tired. Um, so I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a beautiful day. And it's Sunday, so please enjoy it with your families and relax and I will see you tomorrow. I'm hoping to replant my crazy plant that I call Medusa. You will see her tomorrow. She's just growing wherever she wants to. And I, I need to repot her because I need, she's a bigger pot. So I'm hoping it'll be nice enough to do that tomorrow. But anyway, we'll figure it out. Regardless, I will talk to you tomorrow unless something other horrific thing happens in our government. Who knows what could happen? I hope not, though. Anyway, have a beautiful day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.